From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. A Laurel woman is speaking out decades after falling victim to a crime that took decades to solve. The terror and the fear and the it paralyzes you, but then I thought of my kids. Plus, Montana's second Chick-fil-A is opening this week in Missoula. We'll tell you what it could mean for the one coming to Billings. It's not rocket science to realize Chick-fil-A is going to draw more people to the area. And we'll have an update on a weekend homicide, leaving police searching for suspects. And good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Monday, November 7th. Thank you so much for joining us. Happening this week ahead of midterms, candidates continue a last minute push for your support. And our cameras were rolling as House District's 47 candidate Denise Baum went door to door over the weekend. She's one of the Democrats facing an uphill battle tomorrow in a state election where Republicans are expected to strengthen their control in Helena. It's a similar story nationally. And as reporter Joe St. George tells us, both parties believe they have the ability to pick up some important seats. Well, it's finally election week. By now, the money has mostly all been spent. The final ads are airing. All signs pointing to a historic turnout. So with just a few hours left, who has the advantage going into Election Day? Let's start with the GOP. Advantage number one for them, recent history. If we look at the poster of all the men who've held the job of president, you realize quickly that recently they tend to have rough midterm elections during their first term. George Herbert Walker Bush, his Republican Party didn't win in 1990. Bill Clinton's Democrats lost big in 94. So did Democrats in 2010 when Obama was president and Trump lost the House in 18. George W. Bush, the only recent president not to suffer a setback, but 9-11 happened and his approval ratings were high. Republican advantage number two, inflation in the economy. While you can debate what role Democrats actually played in creating inflation, the reality is voters in nearly every poll care about this issue more than any other. And Republicans maintain the edge when it comes to who Americans think can fix it. My fellow Americans, folks can win. But don't count out just yet the Democratic Party, especially when it comes to the Senate. Democratic advantage number one, a friendly map and inexperienced GOP candidates. Of all these nine swing states, Democrats currently control five of them and all their candidates have a real shot at re-election. If Democrats just win what they already control, they'll keep control of the Senate. Democrats could also even flip a red state like Pennsylvania, not to mention Republican Senate candidates in Arizona and Colorado, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New Hampshire are all running what experts say are solid campaigns, but not one of them has actually held elected office before. And finally, Democratic advantage number two, an unprecedented concern about democracy. This is the first major federal election since the January 6th attack at the Capitol, and we still don't know if Republicans will be penalized for their alleged role on that day. One thing is clear, the White House will have to work with whichever party controls Congress after Tuesday's election. If Republicans take back just one chamber, it will create new political debates in this country over everything from the IRS to the border. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Our more than 40 million Americans already cast their ballots. It's not stopping some of the biggest names in politics from some last minute campaigning. Today, President Biden travels to Maryland. President uh, Trump, he is stumping in Ohio. And just this weekend, four U.S. presidents were hitting the campaign trail. President Barack Obama in Pennsylvania, Bill Clinton was pushing for Democrats in Nevada, and Donald Trump made those stops for GOP candidates in Pennsylvania and in Florida. Meanwhile, the FBI is warming extremists pros pose a heightened threat to the midterms and beyond Election Day. There are currently no specific threats. However, officials with Arizona Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake's campaign said a staffer opened an envelope containing a suspicious white powder. No one was hurt and the investigation is ongoing. Let's get to that other big story of the day. It's going to be the weather, of course. Yeah. Hi there, Miller. Hello. <laughs> He's like, hi. Got some yeah. stuff to tell you that's not probably going to make you happy. Well, if you love winter, I'm going to be your favorite person the, the next couple are. of days yeah. because old man winter is coming in and reminding everybody he still exists. Yeah, we've been very fortunate up to this point, but the bottom is about to fall out. Not only are we going to get very cold, but we possibly have a good bit of snow heading our way. I'm not just talking about the mountains. I'm talking about the lower elevations too. We're gonna to try to break it all down with the main forecast coming up here in just a second. Step back in time, yesterday our high only got up to 39, so well below average, well below average with our overnight low of 18 as well. We're waking up to temperatures below average right now across a good portion 
of the area. Top gust yesterday of 30, of course, nice and dry, uh, basically a dry start to the month. Uh, for the year, we're still pacing a little bit of he uh, ahead, but it's still very dry out there. We could use some moisture, and we have a lot of moisture heading our way. Now, the snow totals, of course, lacking so far, but we may wipe those numbers out moving forward. Temperature-wise, right now, it's 17 at the airport. Feels like 6. Winds out of the north at about 9 miles an hour. Waking up for the most part this morning. West to east, we're in the teens and 20s. Highs today, mainly in the 30s and 40s. Today's going to be downright balmy considering what we're facing the next couple of days. Our warmest day today, and then it gets cold and snowy. A lot of stuff to talk about with the main forecast coming up, so stick around. It's one thing to like winter, but the cold, I don't know that anyone likes that. Yeah, my apologies ahead of time. It's, it could get kind of brutal out there. Oh, Miller, it's oh, okay. We'll it's forgive okay. you. Thank you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how you feel by the end of the week. All right. Yeah, we will. All right, we'll talk to you in just okay. a little bit. All right, this morning, Billings Police continue searching for two suspects accused of shooting a person and then leaving that person to die inside of a vehicle. Over the weekend, police responded to South 29th Streets for reports a vehicle crashed into a parked car. They found a driver shot and talked with witnesses who say they saw two people fleeing the area before officers arrived. That victim died in the hospital. It's the latest violence bringing us to over 35 shootings in Billings just in 2022 alone. All right, this is a case that rocked the town of Laurel for years, the murder of 18-year-old Miranda Fenner. And when that case closed 21 years later, our cameras covered the sentencing of Zachary O'Neill. Well, this morning we meet another victim mixed up in the case who's using her pain to help others heal. Q2's Jackie Coffin has her story of hope and healing. 24 years ago, Julia Lulithan stood on this sidewalk during early morning rush hour traffic, clutching her throat that had been cut during a violent attack by a man she did not know. It's a story Lilithan has only began sharing publicly very recently. And while the details are terrifying, Lilithan says the message is to not live in fear. I'm Julia Lilithan. I was born and raised in Montana. Grew up on ranches and farms. When Julia Lilithan describes herself, she talks about her children and her grandchildren. And um, six grand dogs and six grand cats. <laughs> and her career passion of administering the Yellowstone County Spelling Bee. Stay pretty busy. But that's not the part of her life she's sharing with inmates at the Billings Alpha House. This is where things become much more personal. I'm, I'm Julia Lilithan, and I am a survivor of a serial rapist and murderer. For the past year, Lilithan has been traveling to correctional facilities across Montana, meeting face-to-face -face with felony offenders and sharing her story. He came up behind me and, and he, I was, I felt like I had been hit by a freight train. On September 5th, 1998, Lilithan was working a paper route when she was attacked from behind, dragged into an alleyway, raped at knife point, and stabbed in the neck and face. I knew that I couldn't keep fighting him off. I was worn out and tired and exhausted. Um, and terror, um, the terror and the fear, and the, it paralyzes you, but then I thought of my kids and where they would be without me. And Lilithan's attacker wasn't done. The same man then raped another woman seven days later. On November 15th, 1998, he struck again, murdering 18-year-old Miranda Fenner at this video store in Laurel where she worked as a clerk. I felt there was a connection there and I did ask the detectives and they said no, it was two totally different MOs and they weren't even related at all. And for 21 years, there were no arrests until it's a day of reckoning for a vicious monster. 42 year old Zachary O'Neill came forward and confessed to it all. We're relieved that there is an end in sight for the nightmare that's caused so much heartache and pain. Lilithan faced O'Neill at his sentencing alongside Fenner's family. But the connection between the Billings grandmother and the crimes was not public. In court documents, she was anonymous, known only by her initials. I leaned really heavily on my faith. At the, at the very beginning, I questioned it. I really had a hard time because I felt, you know, do I have a target on my back? What is this? You know, how much more can a person take? And that wasn't a story she was ready to claim publicly until recently with the help of victim services groups. 
and I want to advocate for other victims and survivors and for those that are unable to speak. Over the last year, Lilithan has entered a new era of empowerment. She now travels the state speaking to inmates as part of the Department of Corrections Victim Impact Panels, a 13-week program designed to build empathy and reduce recidivism. Thinking I was going to make a difference and I was going to help other people, but the truth is people in the VIP program um, and the inmates have helped me so much. Even helping Lilithan navigate the murky and tumultuous waters of forgiveness. After he was sentenced, I did get a letter of apology. And um, he expressed regret, and I felt he was sincere. As Lilithan prepares for her next presentation at the Montana State Prison where O'Neill is currently housed, she hopes to bring other people out of the shadows and down the path of healing. From your heart, you're still hurting. 24 years later, it's still raw. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Okay, construction continues this morning on the Chick-fil-A restaurant opening near King Avenue. It's supposed to be ready within the next few months, but many are indeed worried about the traffic in that area, as we know. It is something our fellow Montanans in Missoula are also bracing for right now. The state's second Chick-fil-A is opening there this week off Reserve Street. It's one of the busiest roads in the state. The Montana Department of Transportation tells us they'll monitor traffic in the area to see if changes are needed. We want things to happen incrementally so that we can take these crash cluster areas that are we know are dangerous today um, and, and do small fixes and coming, you know, together as a community, we can do that. Officials say adding a stoplight won't help because it will back up more traffic, so they'll gather some data before deciding if any changes need to be made.